to him on, on an occasion like this. I, I think, given his own work, it's uh, entirely appropriate that I should be emphasizing inequality today. Uh, as you know, inequality, equality and inequality have been great themes in his work going back to the, uh, to the 70s, if, if not earlier. Uh, and uh, it's also a theme that I've been uh, very interested in myself, uh, and part of this talk will uh, be devoted to trying to lay out some work that uh, Michael Kramer, uh, who's a development economist at, at Harvard, and I have done together uh, on trying to understand uh, the causes of inequality, uh, particularly uh, the inequality brought about by the, the recent globalization. So let me first set the scene. I don't have to tell you that uh, there has been an, uh, quite an amazing globalization that has taken place over the last 20 years or so. It's, it's touched uh, nearly every aspect of our economic and, and cultural lives. Uh, it's meant that uh, you can go into uh, a supermarket in any city of the world, Jakarta, New York, London, and see vegetables and produce from every corner of the world. Uh, it's also meant that the production process itself has been globalized. And actually, this, this is a point that I, I will be emphasizing later. It's, it's a distinguishing feature of this globalization by comparison with the uh, sequence of globalizations that have, that have occurred in the past. Uh, by the internationalization of production, I mean that uh, to take uh, computers, for example, computers may well be designed in the U.S. and programmed in Europe and then assembled in China. So, so there, there's a genuinely international uh, production process. And, and, and as you'll see, that's going to be import, an important part of, of my story. Now, I. I don't want to dwell on the causes of globalization. There are several. Uh, let me just mention uh, them briefly. Uh, of course, uh, the traditional cause of, of increasing globalization has always been a, a decline in transport costs, and, and that's, that's true in this one, too. Perhaps more important uh, for, the, for the recent globalization has been a decline uh, in communication costs, uh, thanks to the uh, new uh, telecommunication possibilities, uh, you can essentially costlessly <coughs> communicate with people any place in the world, and that's that's been important for, for uh, both production and and consumption. Uh, and then, uh, to, to some extent, the removal of trade barriers has been important. So, so in this part of the world, uh, the, the ASEAN uh, Free Trade uh, Agreement so has, has certainly removed uh, uh, barriers to trade. Now, globalization has made a number of promises uh, to the people of the world, in particular to the people living in poor countries. Uh, first, uh, its proponents have argued that globalization will bring prosperity to poor countries. And uh, to a remarkable extent, uh, this has happened uh, in, in, in many poor countries, and probably the most spectacular examples have been uh, China and India, which have seen really remarkable growth rates over a long period of time. Uh, but another promise that globalization made was that it was going to uh, eliminate or at least reduce uh, inequality, the, the, the gap between the rich and the poor, the haves and the uh, have-nots. Um, and this promise, I'm afraid, has not been delivered. Uh, 
and in fact, uh, quite the opposite. In, in many poor countries, uh, emerging countries, uh, including China and India, including Indonesia, uh, in, including Mexico, including uh, countries around the world that have been touched by globalization, uh, inequality has increased rather than fallen. Uh, and that, that's, that's the issue that I want to, uh, to concentrate on today. Now, uh, I probably don't need to dwell uh, on why reducing inequality uh, matters. It, it, it was already uh, mentioned in uh, Dr. Pineda's uh, introductory remarks, but uh, an, an, an audience like this doesn't need to be convinced that Inequality, reducing inequality matters, but uh, let me just mention uh, three uh, arguments that are often made. The, the first is, is the egalitarian argument, the ethical argument that we are all human beings and we deserve uh, to be treated uh, equally as human beings, and, and, and this uh, includes at least uh, equality of, of opportunity. Uh, but even if you don't accept that argument, uh, you, you may believe that uh, eradication of poverty is important. And of course, uh, particularly in poor countries, uh, reducing inequality is a means to uh, eradicating poverty. Uh, even if you don't accept that argument, uh, there is uh, a more pragmatic uh, argument so we know from long experience that there is a uh, important connection between social stability and income equality. That is, in, in countries where inequality grows beyond a certain point are more prone to political, social, economic upheaval, and so simply to keep uh, the society together, there's a good practical reason for being concerned about inequality. In any case, uh, the point I want to start with is, should we be surprised from the standpoint of economic theory that inequality has gone up as a result of this recent globalization. Uh, should, we, uh, should we have predicted that this would have happened? Well, uh, interestingly, 